this is going to be a study on the subject of God, the Creator. In case you think that the Lord can't create a clean heart in you, in case you think He can't create a better way of life for you, and in case you think He can't create something new out of something old and dirty, let's look at God as the Creator. Now the Bible takes for granted that people believe in God because it says only a fool would deny his existence. In Psalms it says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. So Genesis 1.1 says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Isaiah 42.5 says thus saith the Lord he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. Acts 14, 15 says, We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. There is no doubt about it. The Bible teaches that God is the Creator. So forget about what the textbooks say. And look at what the good book says. Forget about the textbooks and look at the old black book, which has more knowledge and wisdom, instruction and goodness and strength and longevity and truth and comfort and understanding than all the textbooks from every university put together. It talks about, in this old black book, those who profess themselves to be wives actually become fools. It talks about this in Romans 1. So all of these professors who deny the existence of God as the Creator, your King, King James Bible clearly says that He is the Creator. The same one that says, Let God be true, but every man a liar. Just like people deny the existence of God, the Creator, they deny that He can create something in them that can give them victory over sin. Maybe you are born again, you're saved, and on your way to heaven, yet you still have a besetting sin in your life. You believe there's a God, and you believe He is the Creator. You believe He was strong enough to sling the stars into existence, because Psalms 147, 4 says, He telleth the number of the stars, He calleth them all by their names. You believe he was strong enough to do that, but if you don't believe he was str he's strong enough to get rid of that sin in your life. And if God is strong enough to create everything you see, he is strong enough to mold you and make you pleasing in his sight. In a sense, no matter what happens, no matter how many times you sin, if you're saved, you are pleasing in his sight. Because once you get saved, he gave you the spotless record of Jesus Christ, and he put the Lord Jesus Christ's record on your record. But in a sense, when it comes to the flesh, you still sin and you won't be sinlessly perfect until you get a new body. But we should try daily to make our life be pleasing in His sight. 1 John 3.22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. So you know what pleases God? His Son. Matthew 3, 17 says, And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So if you want to, want to please God, try your best to make your life match Jesus Christ as much as you can. Jesus is the only sinless person to ever exist, but we should strive to be like Him. And since you are saved, you have Jesus Christ in you. Jesus Christ is God. He's part of the Godhead, which is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. It isn't just the Father who created everything. It was Jesus who created everything. John 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So you are a new creature after you get saved. You have the power in you, the power that created the world's, the power that had power over sin and over the grave, that power lives in you. Jesus Christ lives in you. He never sinned and rose from the grave. So you have something in you that walked this world and never sinned one time. 
So you have something in you that can give you victory over a certain sin. Colossians 1, 15 through 18 goes on and talks a little bit more about the Lord Jesus Christ being creator. It says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So this creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is in you, and you are in him, if you're saved. So if you're saved, you have the power in you that created everything. And he can pave a way for you to have a new start, a clean mind and a clean heart. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God the Creator can also take your wicked, perverted, sinful mind and transform it into something that thinks on whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of good report. As Paul talks about in Philippians, and Paul says in Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So God created the earth in the beginning. Satan, as Lucifer, rebelled and wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted to take God's place on the throne. And for this reason, the Lord destroyed the earth with a flood. And that's why Genesis 1-2 says it was without form and void. But then it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God redid the whole thing and made it beautiful again. And maybe you are newly saved and you're still struggling with sins that you did before you were saved. You need to believe that God can take that wicked mind and transform it. He created you. He, he formed you in the womb. Your mind was corrupted through sin. Now you're saved and he can take your perverted mind and make it meet for his use. And pretty soon this world as we know it is going to be destroyed and the Lord is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah 65, 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Once you get saved, God made you new and wiped your slate clean. And the same way the former things shall not be remembered when it comes to the new heavens and the new earth, as it says in Isaiah 65, 17, the former sins you did won't be remembered when you get saved. Not only that, but when you mess up and sin after salvation, those sins aren't applied to your soul. And now you will be, you, you won't be judged for those sins at the judgment, but you'll be judged for sins in the flesh. But if you want a fresh start in the sense of this present life you're in, confess your sins, and He is faithful and just to forgive you your sins. And that's not for salvation, that's for fellowship. But He won't remember them. And He's not going to come back later and bring it up on down the road. He's going to wipe your slate clean. Maybe you're saved and you were living for God at one point. You thought your, your life was clean. And maybe your secret life was even clean. But now you've been sinning secretly. And your secret thought life has become full of sin and ruin. The same God who creates, who's going to create a new heaven and a new earth is the same God that can create a clean heart and clean mind in you all over again. I, I never stop rededicating my life to God. I love a fresh start. Even when it isn't a New Year's resolution, I do New Year's resolutions all year round. I think, Lord, I'm sorry. I should have been doing better. I want to do better. Please, God, help me and transform my mind. Get the sin out of me. And I want to start over again. Just like after Noah's flood, after God washed all the ungodliness out of the world, Noah had a fresh start. And he was king over the kingdom of heaven. 
he started out with a sacrifice. Genesis 8.20 says, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So start new with a fresh start. God can create a fresh heart and a clean mind in you. Sacrifice those sins on the altar, and let God create a new way that leads to pleasing Him in your life. Think about this. If you believe there is a God in existence who is powerful enough to create everything, then you should believe that same God is powerful enough to fix anything in your life that needs to be fixed. And another thing I want to talk about is God the Creator is also a God who is full of truth and who preserves. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Psalms 12, 6 through 8 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times thou shalt keep them O Lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted but that's Psalms 12 6 through 8 it says God the creator wrote a book and preserves it it's full of words of truth no lies no errors no small blemishes and anyone who says otherwise is a Bible denier and proving God right when he says, let God be true, but every man a liar. Ain't that something? When you tr try to correct God's book, you're actually proving him right because you're telling everybody you're a liar, just like he said you were. So the same God who can create everything and create a new you is the same God who never tells a lie. And it blows my mind how these men think they can correct an eternal God. And God says about himself, in Deuteronomy 32, 39 through 40, it says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If you're saved, you have the God in you, who has always been here and always will be. And I'd rather believe him than all of these men who want to correct his word and his word says you can get victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. You don't have to live a servant to sin. You can serve God. Man has a problem believing in something that he can't see. And that's why sometimes he has a problem believing in God. And that is why he has a problem believing he can have a life without alcohol, without fornication, without filthy language and pornography and drugs. Because that's all he has ever known is sin. But if you look at what is around you, you can see this creation had to have a creator. God exists. The same way the watch on your wrist didn't come together by itself is the same way this world didn't come together by itself. Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So there is no excuse to not believe God is real. So there is no excuse to not believe the Bible. And not. And there's no excuse to not follow what it says. You have someone to be accountable to. You aren't your own final authority. God and His Word is the authority. And if you want to be happy and satisfied, then serve Him. God placed something in every man to where they can only be happy and truly fulfilled if they get saved and serve Him. Psalms 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. When you look up and see the clouds and the stars and the heavens, you know that it didn't just come about by itself. Some people say that people in the, in the city are so wicked because there are so many lights there, so they don't notice the lights up in the night sky. So next time you go outside, look around. Look up and think to yourself about how God created all that stuff you see in nature. They say the color green is the easiest color on the eyes. And what color did he make most things? Green. Uh, you know how I know God is real? Life must come from life. If you're an evolutionist, then you believe life got here from deadness. But God is alive and he brought man to life. Psalms 94.9 says, He that planted the year 
shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? God sees you. He hears you. Uh, he made your ears and your, your eyes. He takes part in your life. Job 7.17 7, says, What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? If you're thinking that you've gone too far and that the Lord isn't going to hear you, then you don't know the God of the Bible like you should. The internal God is a merciful, long-suffering, and forgiving God. And if you want a clean heart and a cleaner life after you're saved, then you're going to have to have a personal fellowship with the Lord. And He is mindful of His saints. When you go to work, He goes to work with you. When you go to school, He goes to school with you. Many times, kids have an imaginary friend as a kid, and maybe... That's the devil's way of counterfeiting their real friend, who they have, which nobody can see. The same way that imaginary friend just follows you around and is there in every situation you go through, that is how God is there and is in every situation you go through. And you can talk to Him, and He'll talk back to you in His Word. All of these God-haters will say that God is dead, but something eternal will never die. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life in John eleven twenty five, he said I am the resurrection and the life in 1 John 5 12 he says he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life he's not dead he's alive and another idiotic thing people think is that the Lord made the world but never took part in his creation by interacting with his creation and that's not true either 1 John 1, 1 and 2 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. We have seen him, and heard him, and read his book. You felt him touching your heart the day you got saved, telling you that you are a sinner on your way to hell. The Bible says he is the God of all comfort. He comforts the saints. So I've given you scripture that proves God exists, that God can see you and hear you, that God is alive because He is life. And I've given you proof from scripture that God is mindful of Him. So what is keeping you from asking God to help you with your sin problem or with whatever problem you have? The same God who created everything can make everything right in your life.